Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna be messing a little bit with a Dell server that's unusual this is a Dell Power Edge 2950 and it's the third generation of that model I don't know how that works but it's kind of weird to me but this is one of the servers that I um, kind of want to get rid of so um, I'm hoping that um, making a video about it somebody out there hopefully nearby would think "Ooh, I would love a server like that so um, that's the general idea for all you server lovers out there um, and of course Denmark is a shitty place to ship anything out of especially being a private person so um, it would be preferred to pick this up because um, it really adds to the price when you ship servers around the world um, but let's see what this is so here is the front of this Dell PowerEdge 2950 and it actually has a nice display. Um, it doesn't show very many information but it actually tells me that well we have a fault on, um, on drive number two. I've tried to m switch them around so uh, it might be drive number three now but um, never mind. Otherwise we have of course the rack mounting stuff. We have the power on button and we have I believe that's the green LED button. I'm not totally sure. We'll have to have a look at that when I turn it on. We have that display. We can kind of press that and it turns color and we have a fault. We have a couple of USB ports, USB 2, I presume. We have the VGA connection on the front. Awesome. This server has a layout with four large form factor 3.5 inch hard drives. Moving further over here, we have a uh, CD-ROM, I'm not sure if it's a DVD as well, but it doesn't say here on the front. And it has a floppy drive, that's gonna be totally um, never used. And rack mounting. This server also has one of these nice thingies to put in front of it so that it looks really slick and sweet and you can, you can lock it so that no one else can get in there and the key has never been moved from where it comes when it's new so uh, yeah not a feature that has been uh, used too much on the back we see that it does not have the management uh, installed it has a serial connection it has the rare vga connection and it has two usb ports it has two network ports it's uh, complaining over here with a yellow led that it's a fault um, this one has a couple of extra network cards. Um, I think I'm just gonna leave those in. I don't really mind. Then we have the power supplies. Should we just check that? Uh, yep, so we have these are some beefy big power supplies 750 watts. That's, um, that's hefty. So, yeah, putting that back in. that in and let's reconnect power yeah there oh I didn't get that in but yeah that's the back of it it has a um, has a lot of good things the network connections are one gigabit Ethernet ports and there's two extra one gigabit Ethernet ports there awesome and this server comes with a um, license an OEM license for server 2003 um, standard for the R2 64 bits so cool on the back of the lid we get a little bit of information here um, this is not a lot but it does say what different stuff on the system board is sit down here and there is a little bit of help with some with some rate configuration and a little bit of additional information here but it's not a lot i have seen way better information on other servers so here we have the inside of the server and uh, yeah compared to newer servers this server is really packed inside there is um, there's a battery for the rate controller the rate controller is here this is oh it's a six slash i i think it's called it posted that when i booted the server down here you can boot from a USB stick that you can pop in right there. 
There is hot pluggable fans here that you can take out. They are nice. Uh, this plastic thing comes up and goes out of the way like this. And this server has two CPUs. Both of them are Intel Xeon 5450s. These are two quad core, three gigahertz processors. Uh, the generation before hyperfretting. So they have real cores, but no hyperfretting. Eight base for RAM, and this is DDR2 RAM. Each of these blocks are two gigabytes. So a total of 16 gigabytes in this server. Further over here, we have a couple of interesting ports. It has some SATA connections here on the system board. There's one here and there is one further up here behind this riser card. There is another SATA port. So um, that's interesting because up front here, we kind of have a power connection. So it would be possible, I'm guessing, to have something like an SSD located and uh, giving it power from here and a SATA connection from down there. That would be neat. Otherwise, we can see those two network ports that are located. They are here. And if a management, a, a duck is installed, well, that is usually located here and goes out the back. For this, there's a supposed to be an ethernet plug down there for that to go out. It has collected a bit of dust, so um, yeah, let's see if we can't find this a new home. I want to check that um, that disk error. So this server, uh, <clears throat> it kicks a punch when you just turn it on, so I thought we should just hear that. Sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? So my thought is right now um, to just try and install some operating system and I've just found a USB key and this has server 2016 on it. So uh, I was gonna install that, but I wanna check the drive here. This one should come out and yeah, it's bad. So apparently we need to do something with that and replace that. So, mm. okay, let's power it off again. see the drive it's a Seagate 146 gigabytes 10k oh performance 10k I don't get that it says performance 10k rpm 15k okay that's weird I'll check if I have one of those okay I am um, I wasn't able to just find one just like it so I took another one this is an IBM branded one and it's also 146 gigabytes and 15K. So um, yeah, we're gonna try and put that in instead. So it's gonna be interesting to see if a Dell server will approve an IBM drive. I think this uh, server is old enough so that it probably don't care that much, but I could be wrong. And this one is apparently just dead. That's a shame. It's the first time for everything. I'm sure no one has ever heard about a dead Seagate drive. That's amazing, right? A dead Seagate drive. Yeah, what are the odds? I'm sure the comments are going wild. So let's pop this in. This might be a Western Digital branded drive. I'm not entirely sure, but see if we can get that up and running. And these are SAS drives. Yeah, let's pop that in. Try and power this on again. So I'm gonna try and see if I can get into the setup or the BIOS of this thing and I uh, will just look at the different stuff in there. Yeah, I am sure that this BIOS is old as heck, but I'm not gonna mess with that. I have, well, not that much experience of um, with firmware updating a Dell server like this. 
I do believe that I have done it, but it's a long time ago. Why is the F2 button not working? Hmm. So yeah, it kind of says that it's a 3 gigahertz processor here and a front side bus of 1333 megahertz and 16 gigs of RAM. Awesome. RAM frequency of 667 megahertz and it's complaining about the battery of the rate controller um, yeah the battery has been off forever so it probably battery might be okay but it might need to charge a bit I am quite amazed that it remembers the date as this server has been off I haven't had it on in forever so that's quite good memory information 16 gigabytes DDR2 um, FB dash dim hmm and some of the other stuff CPU information 3 gigahertz and down here it tells us what CPU this is X5450 two of them and let's just check the boot sequence we have oh it boots from A drive and the CD-ROM drive network and the C drive so what if I wanted to add that USB device where would I do that internal USB port is on so okay that's about what's interesting here let's save and exit and I want to go into the rate controller and see if we can set up a rate on those four drives now doing post you have to press Control R to get in here and this is the PERC PERCS 6-I Integrated BIOS Configuration It's old as the king um, So ah, What can we do in here? F2 options We can delete that thing um, It has a virtual disk which is well it has some kind of an operating system on it but nothing that i can get into it is password protected and uh, yeah i don't need that so we're gonna delete that delete virtual drive hit it yes so now there is no configuration awesome so let's see if we press f2 then we can create a virtual drive that's a great idea and it sees four drives over here that's awesome rate zero we can pick something else let's pick a rate five um, yes and we'll select those drives there and how do you add them oh they are already added okay we can give it a name my playhouse that's a good name oh and uh, oh, there, my playhouse. Awesome. Advanced settings. Uh, nope, I think we're good. Let's just go. Okay. It's recommended that all new reverbs, unless you are attempting to. Blah, 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 blah. Yes, yes. It's. um. It did that. So we have 400 gigabytes available in our newly created RAID 5 that's amazing and we have some physical drives 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 1 and 0, 3 nice weird that they it jumps like that okay so um, yeah I think we're good to go here let's just exit here and um, put in the USB stick here and see if we can we can get to boot on it it tells me to control out the lead to boot and we should get a boot menu over here anytime soon there and we have to press 11 F11 to go into the boot menu yeah it got it it has to initialize the keyboard before I can do anything okay this doesn't has nearly amount of oh oh okay we have actually something here so hard drive C we can pick our USB stick that's a weird 
it would have been cool if they had had another one called USB because uh, hard drive C that's just weird that you have to go in there and pick the USB so now we're booting from the USB press any key to boot from USB yeah we should be starting up our Windows installation server Windows well Microsoft server installation here might not be that interesting so let's um, if anything of importance will happen you will see it it's just bragging with who it is okay that kind of worked um, it was almost boring so let's log in here um, I just picked uh, my playhouse with big M and big P and big H and a one at the end so now I can remember that forever and ever and ever and ever so here we have the disk manager we have 407 gigabytes and it also sees the USB key that I haven't pulled out yet so let's remove that and that disappeared so that is all good then there's device manager it, uh, it kind of found everything I didn't have to do anything I haven't connected a network connection to this I'm actually using the network connection um, that I'm usually draws out to this table for something else at the moment but it found all the drivers which is fair enough because this is a new operating system compared to this a bit older server so there is that and then there is performance we, we kind of see that we have eight cores available and these are the x5450 3 gigahertz we have what is the RAM oh there there is the RAM so 16 gigabytes of RAM available awesome so this server is ready to move on to somebody else's happy home um, be advised these are a bit more noisy than your usual PC you can kind of hear it pretty clearly from there right oh you might actually be very very far away so that's how loud it is you can still hear it and um, yeah I'm gonna um, I'm gonna put this up for sale I'm probably yeah I'll put it at my playhouse store yeah I need some more advertising for that so uh, yeah look at it at my playhouse uh, not playhouse check it out at my playhouse store if you're watching this video later it's long gone and I might just um, make it available for patreon sooner because well they get a video here in, in an hour or two so they will already have had the offer check out my playhouse store and thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day I actually have one more need to put that up for sale as well hmm.